Welcome to worship with Portage United Church of Christ. This is worship for the week of January 15th, 2023. And in case you can't tell by looking behind me, we are starting a new worship series for the season of Epiphany. Our series for these next several weeks is called Sad, Shining a Light on the Blahs. You've all heard of seasonal affective disorder, a condition that afflicts many of us in the darker months of the year when there's not as much sunshine. Well, just as that lack of sunshine can result in depression for many of us during those darker months, so too does the lack of light in the corners of our soul and our psyche result in a spiritual affective disorder. It can lead us to feel cut off and far away from the light of God's love. Well, in this series, we are going to shine a light on these blahs, on these darker times for us. We are going to work on ways we can cultivate spiritual practices out of everyday practices that will remind us that no matter how far off, how separated we may feel from the one who is the light of the world, we are always living in that light. I hope you will continue to join me in this series that is not meant to be a substitute for therapeutic or medicinal uh, treatments for the very real issue of depression that many of us face. But this series is meant to help us deal with a soul heaviness that some of us can feel. And I hope you find the uplifting light throughout these weeks. Please join with me now as we prepare our hearts and our minds and our bodies and our spirits for worship. Many of you have probably heard of seasonal affective disorder. It's a condition in which the lack of sunlight, often during winter months, can affect our moods and ability to cope effectively. Millions of people suffer from some sort of anxiety or depression disorder. If you do not, chances are you are close to someone who does. For the next few weeks, we will talk about a condition called spiritual affective disorder. Considering how the uncertainty and pace of life can keep us from the spiritual and emotional well-being that God desires for us. But instead of focusing on typical spiritual practices as an antidote, we will simply focus on how everyday life activities could become spiritual practices. Deepening our experience of a meaningful life and helping us shine a light on the blahs. This morning, we hear the scripture reminding us to arise, shine, for your light has come. This is your invitation to flip the switch and see waking up each day as a simple reminder that we can start fresh. Waking God, we give you thanks for the chance to start fresh every day. Open our eyes to the light of possibilities, even when the day ahead holds difficulties. Be with us, near us, 
beside us. Amen. Open unto me light for my darkness, light for my darkness, open unto me, open unto me light for my darkness, open unto me, O God. Open unto me, strength for my weakness, strength for my weakness, open unto me, open unto me, strength for my Clear 
at last. Be still, my soul, the waves and winds still know. How Jesus' power ruled them long ago. Feeling afraid, uncertain, down, and depressed is no sin, my friends. It doesn't mean you are separated from God. May we lean on those who are right there and ready to be a cradle of God's love for each of us. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Today's scripture lesson is from Isaiah chapter 60 verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Sovereign One has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness its peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and rulers to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your descendants shall come from far away, and your children shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall proclaim the praise of our God. So first of all, I don't know if you caught the line in the scripture, but one thing that stood out to me, I'm not so sure I want hundreds of camels to cover me. There was something like that in there. I think I'll take a pass on that one. So um, that's my house, my condo, my apartment. How many of you have Christmas lights on your house or had them on your house, on your yard, have ever had them on your house, on your yard, or whatever? How many of you still have your lights up? Amen. That was taken two days ago. <laughs> and it still looks like that. As you can see, I've got mine up. I usually, when it comes to kind of all my Christmas stuff, I try to leave it up through Epiphany. Sometimes that works, but it doesn't too often work out that way. I'm not too good about getting them down by January 6th. It's usually more like March 6th. <laughs> Sometimes Easter. My Christmas lights frequently become Lenten lights. I used to feel great embarrassment by this. Heaven knows my children were mortified if the lights were still up after December 26th. But then, one of my first winters in Vermont, I noticed, I noticed several houses along Route 7, and a variety of them sprinkled around the town I lived in, Middlebury. I noticed several houses had Christmas lights glowing all winter long. I'd be driving down this dark rural road and then off in the distance up on some farm field was a house with some gold or blue or multicolored lights glowing in the distance. And I marveled at this and I found myself wondering why were these people still have their lights on when it was so long past the season? I mean, mine might be up in March, but I'd at least unplugged them by then. <laughs> but gradually it dawned on me. Winter can be long, dark, and isolating especially in rural parts of Vermont, which pretty much constitutes the whole entire state. 
So why not keep a little warmth and light glowing through the long darkness of the winter season? The basic movement of all of life is that it flows through the rhythm of light and darkness. It's been that way since the very first day of creation. Since the dawn of creation, we might say, when God separated the light from the dark and the day from the night. Not because darkness is bad and light is good, but God separated them because all of creation needs this rhythm of light and dark for health and wholeness and well-being. All of creation. But sometimes, sometimes, the darkness lasts a little too long. Sometimes things happen in our lives and in our world and we get out of sync with that rhythm of light and dark. And we find ourselves trapped in a loop of nighttime. The light is dim and infrequent, seemingly out of reach, if not completely out of sight. The shorter daylight in the winter time, as I've said repeatedly so far, does this for a lot of us. It does it for me. So can the grayer skies that we've been having for so long. Yesterday was a gift. It was beautiful. So stop and think a minute. I know we don't like to. But stop and think, what throws you out of sync with that rhythm of day and night, light and dark? Are you affected by the longer nights? Anybody find that hard? Anybody find it hard to listen to the news sometimes? Someone said to me just the other day, getting the news of a six-year-old taking a gun to school and shooting a teacher kind of puts you out of sync, right? There's lots of that. And it's time for us to shed some light on that. When we find ourselves out of rhythm like this and experience more periods of dark than light, the words that we heard in our scripture today can sound like nails on a chalkboard. Arise! Shine! It kind of reminds me of when I was a teenager and my mom or my dad would come in the room on a cold, dark winter morning and say, time to get up, Mar little Mary Sunshine. <sighs> it's not as simple as that, is it? If you've ever experienced this, you know it's not as simple as a rise and shine. If it's any comfort to you, it wasn't that simple for the folks that Isaiah was speaking to either. Chapter 60 of Isaiah was written during the difficult days when the folks who had been exiled to Babylon had just returned to Jerusalem. And they found their beautiful city still in a state of ruins. And it was filled with the folks who had been left behind who weren't carried off into exile in Babylon. Peasants, small landowners, some local enterprising merchants who were probably like the carpetbaggers who headed down south after the Civil War. And then worst of all, of course, was the fact that Samaritans from the north came down to live in Jerusalem. 
and all of these folks had been eking out a living for two generations since the great city of Jerusalem had been razed to the ground. Times were really hard, and the ancient glories of Israel were nothing but a distant memory. And conflict had arisen. Not light. Conflict had arisen between those who had been left behind in Jerusalem for two generations and those who were now returning. So no doubt, Isaiah's optimistic words, Arise and shine, your light has come, elicited a major eye roll from the people. But that doesn't mean there is no hope to be had here. When things are as bleak as they were for the people in Jerusalem, it doesn't mean that there is no hope to be had. Because even though that summons to arise and shine can fall with a thud, oftentimes, and even when the reality of promised daylight seems light years away, there is still hope in the words Isaiah has when we have lost the rhythm of day and night. In Isaiah's world, the glory of the Lord was understood to be the very presence of God. Not just some beautiful sunrise or sunset, but the very presence of God. So that even as darkness covers the earth, even as darkness clouds our lives, the presence of God still rises still pierces what and who is held in darkness. Day or night, Isaiah says, God is present. God is at work in the world. Day or night, God is present. God is working in the universe. Here's another glimmer of hope about the darkness. In her book, Learning to Walk in the Dark, Barbara Brown Taylor reminds us that while darkness is so often portrayed in the Bible as the absence of God, as the place where God isn't, as the place where evil lurks, Darkness is also portrayed throughout the Bible as a place where God does some pretty amazing stuff. Abraham is taken out under a starry sky and given what has become to be called the Abrahamic promise. God takes him out under the starry sky and promises Abraham that his descendants will outnumber the stars. Jacob dreamed of his ladder to the heavens and wrestled with an angel at night in the dark. Mary, uh, Joseph was told in a dream about the child that Mary would bear, and the Magi dreamed that they should return home by another way at night in the dark. And as Taylor eloquently points out, probably my favorite passage in the whole book, new life starts in the dark. New life starts in the dark. Whether it's a seed in the ground, something Jesus talks about in all of his parables, whether it's a seed in the ground, a baby in the womb, or Jesus in the tomb, New life starts in the dark. And finally, consider this. 
we are told, we are commissioned as disciples of Jesus to let our light shine, to share the light of God's love with the world. This is indeed our call. And it is almost unbearable to do if we are struggling with depression or moving through a time of the dark night of the soul, as John of the Cross called it. But in Isaiah, it's different. Here, in Isaiah, the light comes to the people. They aren't called to take it out to the world. The light comes to the people, shining there in that darkness, waiting for the people, waiting for us to see it when we're ready. And when we see it, we will be radiant. So go back to those lights on random hillsides and in random fields in Vermont. I invite us all to start believing that those lights and maybe street lights where we live now, maybe your neighbor's porch light that they've left on waiting for a loved one to come home, or maybe the Christmas lights that you and I might leave up around our front door. I invite us to believe that these lights are whispering Isaiah's promise to us. Arise and shine. Your light is arriving. Even through the days, the weeks, the months, that we are out of step with that beautiful, delicious rhythm of light and dark. Your light is arising. God is present and at work in the universe. God of our arising. We live in varying degrees of sun and shadow. We struggle at times to believe in the dawn of goodness in this world. We find it difficult to understand the complexities of our existence. How to hold both joy and sorrow, love and disappointment. The infirmities of our minds and spirits seem at times more daunting than our bodily aches. Help us to know there are solutions, to trust that we can feel better, even in the most difficult times. May we know with each rising of the sun that you are lifting us, holding us, present with us. Today we pray for all those who are suffering in mind, body, and spirit. Our God, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we've highlighted today, we are going to focus on a spiritual practice each week, something that you do every day that can be a way to enter your day more intentionally to help beat the winter blahs. If you go to our Facebook page, you will see a link 
to a photo of a card with a picture and a scripture quote on one side and on the other side are uh, some suggestions for what you can do each day to enter your day with more lightheartedness. This week, you are invited to create a ritual upon arising. Now, like I said, those of you who are worshiping online will be able to find those on our Facebook page. Once you've decided where you want to pause each day, you can print off this card if you'd like and tape it up maybe on your bathroom mirror for, to look at when you're brushing your teeth, by the coffee pot, or maybe by a lamp on your bedside table. And every day, this card and its suggestions on the back can be your reminder to arise, shine, for your light has come. And now, my friends, I want to invite you to go forth with these words of benediction. Go into the world, feeling the wrap of love around your shoulders, the embrace of well-being encompassing your heart, the confidence that only requires one foot in front of the other, and the assurance that you are not alone. The world needs you and will patiently wait for your light to shine, illuminating just one small corner, speaking even a little bit of hope. We are in this together, along with the one who created us, the one who redeems us, the one who sustains us. So be it. Amen. Where there once was only hurt, He gave His healing hand. Where there once was only pain, He brought comfort like a friend. I feel the sweetness of His love, piercing my darkness. I see the bright and morning sun, as it ushers in His joyful gladness. He's turned my morning into dancing again. He's lifted my sorrow, and I can't stay silent. I must sing, for His joy has come. He's turned my morning into dancing again. Lifted my sorrow, and I can't stay silent. I must sing for his joy has come. Where there once was only hurt, he gave his healing hand. Where there was Comfort like a friend I feel the sweetness of His love Piercing my darkness I see the bright and morning sun As it ushers in His joyful gladness He's turned my morning into dancing again Lifted my sorrow, and I can't stay silent. I must sing for His joy has come. He's turned my morning into dancing again. He's lifted my sorrow, and I can't stay silent. I must sing for His joy has come. moment in time, but His favor is here, 
and will be on me for all my lifetime. He's turned my morning into dancing again. He's lifted my sorrow, and I can't stay silent. I must sing, for his joy has come.